Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahu bi ihsan ila yaumiddin. Allahumma ja'alna minhum amin ya rabbal alamin. As always we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask him to send us peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger, his companions and all those who follow him in the day of judgment. Um, we will be having our program uh, tonight inshallah with uh, Dr. Shahid Rafiq. But before we go into the program, I'll start off uh, with a uh, small recitation from the Quran, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ سَلَامٌ هِيَ حَتَّى مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ just to inshallah, uh, before we go into our program, I'll just uh, briefly talk about uh, what is going to be discussed. The, the theme or the topic of the program is Quran, the manual of change, the path to success. As we all know, that Ramadan is the month of Quran. And we understand that, that it was in these last 10 nights, and uh, as I recited the verses of Surah Al-Qadr, where, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran. Um, and we understand that, again, like I mentioned, that this is the month of uh, Qur'an where we try to benefit and we try to gain that relationship with the Qur'an and ultimately with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an. So for that, we have tonight uh, Brother uh, Dr. Shahid Rafiq, who is you know, active in ICNA, has been active in ICNA and Islamic work in America um, uh, for a long time. He's served as a regional president. Currently, he's on the he's the VP of Tarbiya, uh, Vice President of Tarbiya for, for the ICNA National. So with that, I'll... Uh, hand it to him inshallah to talk about uh, the topic of quran inshallah inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu ba'd a'udhu billahi min ash-shaitani r-rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu la hafizun sadaqallahu al-azim. My respected brothers and sisters, today inshallah the subject of my talk is Quran, the manual of change, path to success. Briefly, I'm going to go over some concepts to understand the value of Quran to understand the power of Quran, to understand that why we call Quran is a book of change. Quran is a book of inspiration. Quran is a book of motivation. And Quran is a revolutionary book because this is the book which gives you power to stand. Ya ayyuhal muzzamil qumil layla illa qalila. Ya ayyuhal muddassir, qum fa'anzir. This is the book that we see that in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hashr, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْعَانَ عَلَىٰ جَبْلِ لَرَعِيْتَهُ خَاشِيًا مُتَصَدِّيًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْسَالُ نَدْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَأَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ About this ayah, Allama Tibrani has written the tafsir if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have given intellect to the mountains and after giving them the intellect, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have addressed them through Quran, they would have become humbled and shattered. The mountain which is very strong the sign of strength and power. But with the power of Quran, even the mountains will humble themselves and will shatter. We see, you know, 
how this book has revolutionized the Arabs. If you remember, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came, these people were unlettered, divided, tribal, culture, and they were insignificant on the world map. And these were the people, you know, their culture was such that they were burying their live girls. These were the people, they were fighting with each other on a bucket of water. So there was no civilized culture. There was no civic engagement between the groups. And they were making tawaf of Kaaba naked. So from a spiritual point of view, they were bankrupt. From human point of view, they were bankrupt. From family perspective, they were bankrupt. But to these people, just in the time of 23 years, 23 years is nothing in the nation's you know, history. It's a very short time. But you see, the same insensitive people, if I give you the best example of Hazrat Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho, that how insensitive he was when he was killing his own daughter, burying his own daughter, and when he was digging that ditch for her and she was cleaning his beard. But he was so insensitive about her that he buried her alive. But the same Umar, after accepting Islam, see how this book changed him, that when he became Khalifa, he was concerned and worried even the animals in his kingdom. Even the animals, if they get hurt or suffered while he was a Khalifa, he was feeling this will be the responsibility of Umar. My brothers and my sisters, even today, you know, world narrative is against Islam. Islam is, you know, said is a terrorist religion. Everybody, if you go on media, social media, there is a talk always against Islam. So world narrative is against Islam. Ground realities are against Islam. The environment is against Islam. And on top of that, the negligence of all of us as a ummah, but still, we see this book inspires not hundreds, not thousands, millions of people. Millions of people get inspired regardless of all this situation with this book. They accept Islam. The people who are already in Islam, this is the book which becomes the main motivational force for them. The main inspiration for them. People are willing to give their life for the religion. As we see, you know, all around the world, you know, especially the people who really have understood this book as a mission of their life. So people are ready to give up everything of their life because of the motivation and inspiration they receive from this book. Quran is not a philosophical, ideological, or just so-called religious book. Rather, it's a book with message and movement. And whatever stories and characters we go through in Quran, there is a reason for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say anything in Quran which has no relevance with you and me up until the day of judgment. It's beyond the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say even a single word in Quran which is not needed there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted you and me to learn from these characters that whenever you will live in this world, you will always have Pharaoh, you will always have Haman, you will always have Qanun, you will always have these people around you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these stories teaches us that how should we behave? How should we conduct ourselves? How should we live our life when we face all these characters which will be there with different names, different titles, with different situations? My brothers and my sisters, our real problem is not Iman. 
our real problem is not faith our real problem is yaqeen certainty true iman and that is our real problem and today inshallah i'm going to go through you know some some points to make us understand that this is the basic need of the hour for us to have a yaqeen and certainty that this is a book of allah this is these are the words of allah subhanahu wa taala so that this book can inspire you and me like this book has inspired the pupil of early time the very first thing i will say when the ayah i read from surah hijr inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun and then allah subhanahu wa taala in surah qiyama is saying la tuharrik bihi lisanaka li ta'jala bi inna alayna inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana fa iza qara'nahu fattabi qur'ana thumma inna alayna bayana you know both of these surah surah hijr and surah qiyama are makkan surah and allah subhanahu wa taala in makka when muslims they were having hard time even protecting themselves they were going habsha they were migrating towards madina they were not even able to protect themselves in that time when the wahi was getting written on bones on on skin or leaves allah subhanahu wa taala this is the biggest miracle of quran that in makkah allah subhanahu wa taala is promising that this is us that we have revealed this book and this is our responsibility to protect it not only protect it allah subhanahu wa taala is promising allah uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam summa inna alaina bayana not only we will protect the words of this book rather we will also teach you the meanings of the words of the book of allah subhanahu wa taala and after 1400 years there is not even a difference of a letter not even a difference of any single letter you will find no matter where you go all around the world to find the sample of quran my brothers and my sisters and this should be a good enough you know reason for us to have this yaqeen that these are the words of allah subhanahu wa taala you know there is aya in surah hashar in which allah subhanahu wa taala says ba'd a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem ولا تكونوا كالذين رسوا الله فانساهم انفسهم اولئك هم الفاسقون that and and be not like those who forgot allah so he made them forgot themselves and brothers and sisters this is our problem that since we have forgotten allah subhanahu wa taala because of that we are like a lost nation when allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that we will make them forget themselves mean they will lose the focus of the life they will lose the focus of the mission of their life they will lose the understanding why we are here in this world the very purpose of our creation so my brothers and my sisters the very first thing we need to benefit from quran is to remember allah subhanahu wa taala to have this firm yaqeen belief that this is a book of allah subhanahu wa taala and whatever allah subhanahu wa taala is commanding me in this book is for me to act upon hasan basri rahmatullah alay and you know hasan basri he is he he was he has all his education his tarbiya under the guidance of umm salama radhi allah taala anha the wife of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because his mom was the servant of umm salama so the nurturing of hasan basri was under the shade of the wife of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was the biggest 
mufassir the the person who knew quran you know very well mufassir al quran the person who has very good understanding the in depth understanding of quran he was one of the one of the top one hasan basri he says really i was amazed by his saying imam ghazali has written this saying of hasan basri in ahya al ulum he says you have taken the night to be a camel that you ride on to pass through various stages and stations of the quran i will repeat you have taken the night to be a camel that you ride on to pass through the various stages and stations of the quran those before you considered it as a messages from their lord they pondered over them at night and lived by them by the day what a true what a true statement of hasan basri that we feel so happy and joyous and glad khushi ke mare jaan nikal jaye janab we are standing at night in tarawi mashallah and we are finishing quran and people are shedding tears and they are so excited that we have you know read tarawi we have read quran we have finished quran hasan basri is saying that this is a deception this is a deception which takes you away from the real focus of quran real focus of quran is that you ponder upon quran at night and then during the day time you go and act according to the teachings of quran my brothers and my sisters you know about virtues of quran there is a famous hadith you know in tirmidhi and darbi has also narrated that and the beauty of this hadith is that this hadith some of the narrations they say this was first narrated by jibril alaihi salam to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then it was communicated to hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this hadith in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through jibril alaihi salam has communicated to us the virtues of quran it's a long hadith so i'm not going to go in the detail of all the virtues that jibril alaihi salam mentioned to prophet and then prophet mentioned to hazrat ali but the hadith started like this that there soon there will be a time of fitna and hazrat ali asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then what will be the way out of that fitna ya rasulullah he did not ask about what are will be the signs of fitna or what will be the you know we should watch for no the their focus was on practical aspect practical aspect of the religion not on the superficial things what difference it will make if i will know what will be the sign or not more important thing is that how i will get out of that fitna some of the virtues mentioned in that hadith one is the ulama never feel sufficed when searching for the meaning of the quran because every time they will read quran they will find something new you will not feel bored from reading again and again it's ajaib ajaiba the treasures of quran will never end just these three points i will say from this hadith how true it is my brothers that every time people like us even if we go and reach out to quran depending on our level of iman you will find every time you read the same aya you have read 100 times you will find a new beauty in that aya new meaning in that aya new inspiration in that aya new motivation in that aya my brothers and my sisters and any book of the world if you read that book for one month or two month or three month you will get bored you don't want even to see that book again but look at this book of allah subhanahu wa taala 1400 years 
but people don't get bored. They want to reach out to this book more and more to get inspiration, to get motivation. And Ajaibat of Quran, the treasures of Quran, you know, depending on the level of our Iman, Yaqeen, certainty, you will always find new treasures, you know, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In last, I'm going to talk about few tips that which can help you and me that how we can really become people of book, how we can really benefit, benefit from all the treasures of Quran, how we can have this book, you know, in our life. The number one requirement is my brothers and my sisters is sincerity. Wallahi, this is the very first condition. If one has sincerity, no matter what the world situation will be or what it could be, but if somebody has sincerity, this is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is going to provide him or her the guidance. Number two, open your heart. Quran is talking to you and me directly. You know, that's why a lot of people, uh, some of the scholars, they say, if you hear any ayah of Quran or any hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and if the first thing comes in your mind is somebody else, that is enough for misguidance. That is enough for misguidance. So if you hear a message from Quran or Hadith and first person comes in your mind is not you, but somebody else, oh, maybe Quran is talking about that person. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, I know that person has this your deficiency, negative or positive. Brothers, the first person Come, should come in my mind is me, myself, that Quran is talking to me. To open your heart, humble yourself and surrender yourself. My brothers and my sisters, always understand the limitation of our brain capacity. That whatever information, knowledge I have as a human being is very limited as compared to the information of the Quran, as, in, as compared to the knowledge of Allah Rabbul Alameen. So humble and surrender, no matter you are president, no matter you are big scientist, no matter you are PhD, no matter who you are, but as compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our knowledge is very limited. So we should humble ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love Quran. Develop this love of love of Quran in your hearts, my brothers. Until and unless we will develop that love, we will not be able to benefit fully from the message of Quran. And as I said, always think that Quran is talking to me. It came through Jibreel alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and then from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, it came to me and some of the scholars they say and Imam Ghazali has written one of the story in his, in his book that if you really want to taste the sweetness of Quran the halawa of Quran then think that this Quran is, re is getting revealed on you. This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly talking to you and you feel in your heart, if you will have that feeling that Allah is talking to me, then this is going to give you that connection, the love of Quran. My brothers and my sisters, we need to do our taskiya. You know, as a human being, we have two parts of our body. One is called bahimi. You know, all the, all the qualities from the earth, that is part of our bahimi, part of our personality. And one is malaki, means the angel-like. The animal-like and angel-like. All our weaknesses are because of our, you know, uh, bahimi, the earth, the, the quality, the deficiency we, we have because of our that part of personality, the bahimi. My brothers and sisters, Human being is the only creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that humans can become better than angels humans can become better than angels by overpowering by overcoming their deficiencies because of the will power allah subhanahu wa taala has given human being the option they can choose pick and choose this freedom allah has given us if we can control that freedom through the tazkiya is that you take away all the negative forces which can become hindrance in the path to allah subhanahu wa taala and the second part of tazkiya is that you provide all the positive forces which can facilitate your journey towards allah subhanahu wa taala and my brothers and my sisters that if we can raise our status you know when you are more like animals then you go towards earth and when you are more like angels you go up your status go up so i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives you and me this opportunity that we have more qualities like like malaki the the spiritual uplifting that we are more going towards you know allah subhanahu wa taala in the direction of getting his pleasure and seeking his pleasure one more important point i want to highlight here before i will close that remember one thing brothers and sisters there is always you know enemies of islam they always have one effort you know in the equation of islam where you have tawhid then you have risala then you have akhira there is always a effort to take away this risala component out of this equation but wallahi we cannot we cannot understand we cannot walk the walk of quran we cannot live the true life of quran without loving and understanding the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam naim siddiqi sahab has written one book and about sira of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he has written in that that ahadith and sira of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is like a guard over ayas of allah subhanahu wa taala and the enemies of islam they want to take away this guard so they can penetrate and manipulate and give meaning to the ayas of quran according to their own understanding and we as a muslim we have to understand that the importance of the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam more we will be in love of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam more we will know the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then more you will be able to follow the true spirit of quran that's why few of the our scholar they say for ibadat you have to go all the way all the way back up until you reach at the footsteps of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they can you can understand the true spirit the ruh of the ibadat my brothers and my sisters and more you we will know about prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wallahi more we will understand the sacrifice that he has done for you and me to let this message reaches to us the way it is in front of us today and more we will be appreciative of that and more allah subhanahu wa taala is going to open the doors of this book on us mara maududi rahmatullah alay i i always say this then mara maududi has said what hasan basri has said which i you know said earlier in earlier part of my presentation that this is a book that if you and me we really want to benefit and we really want to have the treasures of quran then we have to understand one thing that when we will live the life of quran that is the only time that allah subhanahu wa taala is going to open more and more windows and the meanings and the treasures of quran this is not a book just reading in a drawing room or sitting on a couch and reading this rather this is a book in which you want to live your life the way prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has lived and when you will go through different stations of quran then you will find in your path shebab talib you will find taif you will find you know 
Ahad and Badr and Khandak and all those things will come on your way towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last thing I will say, brothers, Khuram Murad Sahib has written a book about Quran and in which he says, Quran, no matter how good you memorize, no matter how good you can read, no matter how many times you can read, no matter how much you can enjoy the recitation of Quran, no matter how much you know the meaning of Quran, until and unless you are willing to jump to act on Quran, Quran will not open its treasures on you. So he says you should be eager and you should be ready that whatever command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give, I am ready to practice that command. My brothers and my sisters, this is, this is what my bottom line message today is. This book, Quran, is not just for recitation. This is not a book of sawab. This is not a book just to read in taraweeh. This is not a book just to read when somebody dies. This is not a book just to have it when you are having marriage ceremony of your daughter. But this is a book with a mission. With a mission. And that was the mission about which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi came for. That was the mission of his life. And the mission of life was to save every soul on the planet from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we all should have this intention. Living as a minority in this country, still we can have this intention that I will do my best to reach out, to knock on the hearts of every human being living close to me, who is in contact with me, to reach out and give them this message of Islam. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Jazakallah Khair, Dr. Shahad Rafiq, for your presentation. Um, there are a few questions, inshallah, and while I'm asking these questions, I'll request the audience um, to send in your questions uh, through the comment, uh, through the live comments, and we, we'll ask them, inshallah. So the, uh, the first question is, um, what are some some tips to stay connected with Quran after Ramadan? Uh, because we get connected with you know with with Quran during Ramadan, you know uh, the 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 environment is created for that. But what are some tips to stay connected with the Quran um, after uh, even after Ramadan? The best thing is that whenever you get chance, I should say you should plan when you plan your day that I will always have every day, you know, some connection with Quran. So most of the time I have seen brothers, they go, you know, in masjid, they are waiting for salah. But I don't know, this is a culture thing that I have seen when I travel to Middle East, that whenever people are waiting for jama to start, if they have two minutes, if they have three minutes, whatever time they have, they will grab the copy of Quran and they will read. So whenever you get any window, whenever you get any window, if you are a very busy person, even two minutes, even three minutes, have this connection, this longing for Quran. You know, uh, grab, grab the, the Mus'haf and read a few ayahs and try to, my brothers and my sisters, try to read with the meaning. Even one ayah, even one ayah. So don't wait that if I will have one hour, if I will have two hours. No, even if you have two minutes, have Quran accessible to you that you can, you know, open and read. All right. Um, the second question is about Laylatul Qadr. Um, the question is, what is the best way of searching for Laylatul Qadr while we're in lockdown? Do we have to search it every night or only the 27th? Uh, yeah, this is a very good question. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, what I will say is what I see so far about this, uh, you know, coronavirus, COVID-19 and all these things. Wallahi, this has become blessing for many of us. And this is one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given you and me this tawfiq that try to search in all 10 nights starting from today because the reward of Laylatul Qadr is such that you do not want to miss it. 
and you know this is the night when jibreel alayhi salam also comes down this is a night that you can get reward of 83 plus years my brothers so you don't want to miss out so do not do not confine yourself for 27th or 25th or odd nights my recommendation will be that try your best to do ibada in all 10 nights starting from tonight and do whatever best you can do whatever best you can do even if you can pray a few rakats if you can read little bit of quran if you can stay a little bit you know longer at night in the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala do something but try to keep yourself engaged in all 10 nights starting from tonight inshallah um one more question um that's on quran is um we know the importance of quran uh, and there's there's it's emphasized that in the month of uh, in ramadan we should finish the quran uh, the reading of quran at least once uh, so the question is should we give that more importance or priority over uh, maybe understanding uh, you know uh, some some surahs or you know focusing on tafsir of certain surahs instead of focusing more on finishing the quran or citation I don't want to belittle the value of reading Quran. You know, uh, I I I really understand the recitation of Quran, finishing Quran is also important. But I will say, you know, pondering on Quran is more important, and that's why a scholar they say Ibn Qayyim has said that that if you will ponder on Quran for a moment. and then this is better than ibada of 1000 years and one of the narration they say ibn tayyim uh, has said ibn taymiyah has said that but regardless the point was once you will ponder on quran contemplate on quran then the level of your iman will be different and that's why imam ibn taymiyah was asked how is it possible that the the, the contemplation the pondering tadabbur of few seconds is better than 1000 year ibadah so he says that your level of iman after contemplation and tadabbur will be so high that when you will stand in front of allah subhanahu wa taala the level of your connection with allah subhanahu wa taala will be totally different this is why it is also said that you know tadabbur and zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala and pondering and contemplation for few seconds is better than the qiyam of all night because quran again and again invites us to have contemplation have tadabbur understand what quran is saying so i will suggest to you brothers and sisters that i am not you know saying that we should not try to you know finish quran but you know this is not really a requirement this is not a requirement this is not a practice that we have to really you know stick to if we can do it mashallah very nice we will have reward of that but at the same time this book has come to understand mara madudi rahmatullah alay used to say one thing that if you go to doctor and if he gives you a prescription you are sick you know if you come home and if you just read the prescription you will not be cured you have to go to pharmacy buy the medicine take the medicine just by reading is not going to solve your problems so my brother this book is not just for reading this book is not just for recitation yes there is a reward but there is a bigger reward way 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 much bigger reward if we understand it and we practice it jazakallah khair um jazakallah khair one final question um I'll ask is that um you mentioned about the importance of pondering and understanding the quran so what wh- where should one begin um in that process of understanding um it should be just start with translation is this you know anything beyond the translation so just a few advice to just get started in that to that in that process if we can do just one simple thing one aya a day read the translation and read the tafsir of it it will not take more than few minutes one aya a day just read the translation and tafsir and think about it what allah subhanahu wa taala is saying and try to see put yourself in a situation that allah is talking to me so what i should be doing 
when I'm reflecting on this ayah, what is the demand from me? What is my role in this perspective when I'm reading this ayah? And inshallah, if you take from there, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, and remember one thing, brothers and sisters, if you take one step, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make it easy for you. And Allah will facilitate. You just take one step. And if you take one step, everything else, leave it on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will find you time. He will open your heart. He will bring that love of Quran in your heart. And you will be surprised that when you were before thinking that you have no time, that now you got all the time, you know, possible to understand more of Quran, inshallah. All right, Jazakallah Khair. With that, uh, we'll conclude with our Q and A. Jazakallah Khair, Dr. Shahid, for, um, for your talk and you know, uh, answering the questions um, of our community. And Jazakallah Khair to the audience and the community that attended this event. We'll proceed, inshallah, to the next uh, part of the program, and that is going to be the dua. Um, inshallah, we'll, I'll begin with that in just a second. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله ولك الخير كله اللهم لك الحمد أنت نور السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن ولك الحمد أنت قيم السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن ولك الحمد أنت رب السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن أنت الحق ووعدك الحق وقولك الحق ولقاؤك حق والجنة حق والنار حق والساعة حق والنبيون حق ومحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم حق اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اجعل القرآن حجة لنا ولا تجعله حجة علينا اللهم اجعل القرآن حجة لنا ولا تجعله حجة علينا اللهم اجعل القرآن حجة لنا ولا تجعله حجة علينا اللهم ارزقنا بكل حرف من القرآن حلاوة وبكل كلمة كرامة وبكل آية سعادة وبكل سورة سلامة وبكل جزء جزاء اللهم ارزقنا القناعة ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وألسنتنا من الكذب وأعيننا من الخيانة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا تقبل منا صلاتنا ربنا تقبل منا قيامنا ربنا تقبل منا دعاءنا ربنا تقبل منا تلاوة القرآن ربنا تقبل منا كل عبادتنا في شهر رمضان ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن عين لا تجمع ومن نفس لا تشبع اللهم أجرنا من النار 
اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم ادخلنا الجنة الفردوس الأعلى برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ادخلنا الجنة الفردوس الأعلى برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ادخلنا الجنة الفردوس الأعلى برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب الفاعف عنا فاعف عنا فاعف عنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا تقبل من إنا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في سوريا اللهم انصر المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم انصر المسلمين في الهند اللهم انصر المسلمين في سين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير everyone again we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, from us from what we uh, were able to do this this night and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue uh, to make us continue seeking the Laylatul Qadr and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our ibadah that we do in this month of Ramadan our siyam our qiyam our ruku our sujood all the tila- uh, tilawah that we do of Quran we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of that from us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive forgive any of our shortcomings with that, Jazakallah khair, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.